Hello, my name is Dave from APC. So welcome to this ACCA P7 Advanced Audit and Assurance Introduction. So in this particular introduction, I'm going to tell you the syllabus of the P7 in very simple manner. So personally, I would divide the P7 syllabus into three chapters. The first chapters that we are going to cover is before assurance services. So what do I mean by before assurance services? is this. We've got audit and assurance or non-audit and assurance services that we've studied in the FA syllabus before. So audit means we are going to check the financial statements of a client's company in very very careful manner. But non-audit actually means that it's not going to check its financial statements but we're going to check other things so we will explain what do I mean by assurance in the due course. Don't worry about this. So in chapter one of our study, the things that we're going to cover, first of all, is we're going to cover how to advertise your audit firm. Because now you're acting as the audit partner. You're advertising your audit firm in order to sign a contract with your clients to gain the sales revenue for your audit firm. So we'll be invited into the tendering meeting as well in order to compete with other auditors or, I mean, the audit firms. So how you can stand out. So I will tell you how in a second. Don't worry, tell a little secret. And also how you're going to maintain your audit quality, making sure that the quality of your work is high. That means you have to stick to the ISA, which is the International Standards on Auditing, when doing the audit work. And also very, very important indeed is you, can, you have to consider some of the factors before you accept as the auditor to this particular company. So factors we'll consider, for example, if the industry is relatively complicated. So from that perspective, you have to think uh, about those factors. For example, the time to build up the knowledge in order to audit those financial statements in a given time period, whether or not you can do that. Yes, you have to think about that. And one of the important elements within the factors to consider is the ethics. Ethics will be very, very important. So for example, if you're not competent at all, so that means you haven't passed the ACC exams, you can't audit your client's company's financial statements because your lack of knowledge, for example. So IFAC Code of Ethics will give us the guidelines of the ethical factors that we are going to consider before we do the actual audit. Of course, we will cover that in a second. And one of the very, very important elements within the ethics is the money laundering, because that's associated with the confidentiality guideline that is given by IFAC. So from that perspective then, if the client's company is found out, to be conducting some of the activities related to money laundering. So for example, the client's company has killed another person and robbed his money and put it into the bank. So that means we are converting the crime money because the money is from killing that person and rob his money rather than selling the goods to the customers and get the money. So that's the crime money. We put into a bank, at the end of it, we get the money out from the bank. And the money looks clean because the money comes from the bank, rather than robbing others and killing others. So, if the client's company is found to be involved in the money laundering activities, perhaps the auditor will have to report this issue to the appropriate authorities. So, we will detail that when we come to it, don't worry. So that's the chapter one of our studies, the before assurance engagement. Now, let's come to chapter two then. The chapter two that we are going to cover is during the assurance services. And there'll be quite a lot of things that we are going to cover then. So during the assurance services, it can be divided into audits and non-audits. You know the basic idea behind it. Audit means we are going to check the client's financial statements. But non-audit is we're not going to check the financial statements, but rather we are going to check other things. So, first of all, audit assurance engagement. 
So within the P seven syllabus, the audit services will be divided into two parts. First of which is the audit, which means checking the client's company's single company's financial statements, and secondly, checking the company's group financial statements. So one is single company, one is group company. So single company is also known as the single company's published account. The group financial statements, yes, I heard you shout at the screen. Well, Steve, it's the P2 stuff. Yes, it's the group or consolidated financial statements. So the key to pass the chapter two is to apply your accounting standards knowledge into the actual case that the examiner has given you. There's no point to ignore all those accounting standards knowledge before you go to the exam hall. If you forget about all of those, you can't pass the P7 exam because there will be 50 marks in total overlap between the P2 and the P7 paper. So making sure that your accounting standards knowledge is absolutely strong. Of course, during our course, we will go through those accounting standards, don't worry. We know that the single company's financial statements audit or the group financial statements audit will involve six stages. For example, signing a contract with the client's company and then planning an audit and then going through the system and then performing the substantive testing and then reviewing what we have done. Finally, we're going to issue our report. Of course, six stages. I hope you're happy with that, that you've studied in your F8 before. But I, can, I mean, the auditing standards knowledge in the P7 service according to the examiner, will be accounting for 30% of the total marks in the exam. It's not the huge parts that we are going to focus upon. It's very important indeed that you know the basic idea behind each of these auditing standards. And of course, during the course, we will combine those knowledge into the actual case. Don't worry about that. So we'll go through that in a second. The group financial statements audit, of course, we are going to focus upon other bits and pieces in addition to single companies financial statements audit. For example, we're going to focus upon the IFRS number 3 business combinations, the IFRS number 10 for the control definitions, IFRS number 11 joint arrangements, IFRS number 12 for those disclosures. Um, I mean, those are sort of things that we are going to cover in addition to the single fi companies financial statements audits that we've just mentioned before. And of course, the P7 examiner will expect you to know quite a lot of these complicated accounting standards. For example, the IAS number 19, employees benefit, IFRS number 2, share based payments, perhaps the IS number 40, investment properties, and perhaps these different instruments as well. All sorts of things, you have to know that before you go to the exam hall. And of course, as I said, in the chapter 2, we've got Audit and assurance, yes, we've covered those already. Now let's come to the non-audit assurance services. So what sort of things do we really cover then? And of course, one of the overlap between the F8 and P7 is the review on the cash flow forecast that is prepared by a client's company. So a client's company simply projects what is the future cash flow will be because the client's company will have to demonstrate to the bank that he has got the ability to pay back the money into the bank in at some point in the future. And that's the reason why the client's company is prepared for the cash flow forecast and asking our audit firm to review on that particular, um, I mean, forecasting statement to make sure it's reasonable. There will be forensic investigations. That means there will be some of the fraudulent transactions happening in the client's company and asking our audit firm to verify the losses that they suffered. Social environmental audit, due diligence reveal, yes, very, very important indeed, because before you buy another company, you have to know the financial as well as the non-financial status of a target company. Asking your audit firm to verify that amount, for example. Finally, public sector audits associated with the government. Yes, all sorts of things that we are going to cover in the due course. That's the chapter two. I hope you're happy with it. Now let's come to the final chapter of our study, current issues. So current issue means something that will take place in the future. And also something that is very, very hot. It's the hot topic, you can imagine that at the moment. 
That's the reason why we are going to discuss about those here. Quite lots of things that we're going to cover, for example, whether or not we should be liable to some of the circumstances. There will be changes in the auditor's report, whether or not it's good or bad. There will be joint transnational audits. Yes, we are going to cover those as well. Yes, that's the chapter 3 of our study. Right, there you have it. So that's the P7 Advanced Audit and Assurance uh, quick summary or introduction if you like. So I hope you're absolutely happy with it. Should I say, good luck with your exams and look forward to seeing you in my actual class. Thank you. APC, accounting for your future.